protests outside an abandoned Syrian embassy in London. Controversial preacher Anjem Chowdhury leads a group of men, women and children. All of them calling for jihad against the Assad regime. Anger sparked by fresh evidence this week that the Assad government killed over 1,000 people in a chemical weapons attack on the outskirts of Damascus. Our focus now has to be on getting the UN team into there. That, I think, is something around which the whole world should be able to unite and so that everybody can find the facts. So that is what we will continue to work on over the next few days. Uh, but of course we don't rule out any options for the future. Any option that complies with international law and could save innocent lives, we have to be open to those options. Uh, but decisions about that would come later. Now we have to establish the facts. But for this group of demonstrators, UN intervention is futile. Now, you know, the solution that people are looking at is weapons inspectors, or let's see what Barack Obama has to say. You know, red lines have been crossed and they continue to be crossed. And we find that the United Nations procrastinate. They don't really have an agenda. The only people who have a solution for this are the Muslims themselves. And the Muslims worldwide are one and a half billion. So our message today is no to the UN, no to the US, no to, uh, um, you know, half his Assad and his son, of his, sorry, uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad, and yes to Islam and the Muslims. The Muslims must rise, they must uh, participate in jihad to remove the regime and to put the authority in the hands of the Muslims so that they can implement the Sharia. As human suffering continues in Syria, calls at home and abroad for the international community to act grow stronger.